Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video we're going to continue on a little bit on what we did in, the, in my previous one. In my previous video you saw me make this uh, what I call a special use, specialty use uh, uh, shoulder bolt and told you that it went with a piece that looks like this. I told you in that video that if you stuck stuck with me, I would uh, tell you what this was and uh, uh, how it's used. This is, these two go together as such. And it works, or what it's used for is the lift lever on a John Deere tractor. This is a stop. It's basically at the bottom of the, the lift arm goes up and down, or the lift lever goes up and down, and this is a stop to keep you from dropping the implement that's attached to the lift too far down. Uh, in my case, uh, it's a rotary cutter that I'm using that I want to stop, and I have the bottom stop. That's what I'm using for a pattern. But for this rotary cutter, I need to be able to stop that lever in the up direction as well. Um, the way it's set up, and I'll show you some pictures at the end of the video that'll probably make a little bit more sense, but the PTO shaft is turning several hundred RPM, and when the lift picks that uh, implement up, that PTO shaft, if I pick it too high, is coming in contact with the frame of the rotary cutter. So I decided to make another one of these to, uh, uh, to have the bottom stop and a stop to keep me from pulling the lever too far up. Uh, and I fully realize very few of my viewers uh, of this video are going to have a John Deere tractor uh, and even fewer, fewer of them is going to need to, to uh, uh, have a lift stop, top or bottom. But my purpose of making this video, uh, I'm going to be learning some in this video as well. We're going to be doing some facing on the end, uh, both ends probably. We'll do some parting uh, off of a much larger piece of stock that we'll be using. We'll be doing some knurling on the outside and some turning of two different diameters. Now turning two different diameters is no big deal, but something I have never done, uh, never had a reason to do. If you notice in here, there's not a sharp, sharp shoulder. There's actually a curve in there. So we're going to try uh, with a forming tool on the lathe, making that curve. But let's turn now to the lathe and get set up and go through these various steps. Oh, by the way, we'll thread that hole as well. Okay, I have you positioned now up over the lathe. I've got a piece of uh, uh, two inch stock is what I had closest to uh, to the size we need to make this. The outside dimension of our piece is an inch and a half. So I need to turn down some of this stock, just some common turning, need to turn it down to uh, uh, inch and a half. I'm going to zero out Z axis DRO and I'm going to go ahead and turn about an inch and a half of this piece down. That way I'll have plenty of room uh, to get the knurling tool on and the parting tool. Alright, we got our carriage stop locked in place. And again, to begin with, this is just turning this piece of raw stock I got down to a size that we can, uh, we can use to make our part. This little lathe, we can't do a whole lot, but we'll start with about 60 thousandths off of each, uh, 30 thousandths off of each side.
So I did I'd try 80 thousandths on uh, the second pass. That's 40 on each side. Seems to be breaking the chip a little better, but it's still slinging that chip out pretty bad. All right, let's get a quick size. I'll zero out the x-axis. That's 1.769. So that's 269 thousandths to go. I was putting that dimension in the uh, in the DRO. Alright, this should be our last pass. And this is only about 50 thousandths. And of course, this dimension is not that critical, this measurement. But we're within a well then four thousand four and a half thousand, so that's fine. Uh, now our first uh, step down, this looks like about I think it's uh four hundred and sixty thousandths. That looks about right. We'll check here and our zero is still good on the end. It'll we'll come in 460 thousandths. And I'm just going to put a, a witness mark right here. I'm going to come in to about 260 thousandths and put another witness mark. As I said to begin with, I've never tried to turn an inside uh, curve like this has in it. So I may be going around this all wrong, but what I'm going to do first is turn this end down here to the one inch. That's what this diameter is. Turn that down to the one inch. And then we'll turn this down. Well, let's get this first part done. Let's get a quick measurement there to see how much we need to go down, how much we need to take off. That's 447. So that's 447 thousandths we need to take off to get this down to the one inch. Alright, that's down to the one inch. What I'm going to do now is, what I want to do now is turn the remainder of this down until we've got a shoulder over here that is about the same height as this is thick. That should make a little more sense to you when we get down to that point. To get an idea of what this radius was inside, I use a radius gauge set and determined various different trials until I found one that looked like it was uh, it matched good, and that's a 764. 
So what I did was take a piece of blank uh, high-speed steel and carried it over to the grinder and put a radius on there to where it matched uh, this gauge. And as I said folks, I've never done this before so I don't know whether I'm going about this all wrong or right or whether I'm, what I'm doing is going to work or not, but I promise to show it to you either way. So I left this little shoulder in here and hopefully that's going to be, we're going to cut our radius out of that. So let's come in right easy. I expected some chatter, chatter, but we're, I'm only coming in about, about 10, 15 thousandths at the time. Chatter seems to start when we get right up at the end, but we're almost there now. Alright folks, like I say, I don't know if that was the right way or the most dangerous way or what it was. I'll try to get a little backing in there and let's see if I can zoom you in enough. It's a little bit broader than the... Uh, than the gauge, but uh, with that little bit of chatter, I don't think I'm going to go any further. That's, uh, that's a good radius edge in there. All right, so let's move on to the next step. So I think the next thing we're going to do is put our knurling on the, on the top side out here. To do that, I'm going to use, of course, my scissor type knurling tool. And what I want to do is get this knurling tool up over the center line. I'm going to turn my RPMs down a little considerably. And just because I'm using the I can use just because I can use the pliers here doesn't mean I need to overuse them so. put a little bit of lube on. I'm sure you're aware of it, but if you get your lube brush too close to these knurling wheels, guess what it'll do? It'll eat them up. So I'm turning about, about 250 RPMs. I'm gonna engage the feed. And I'm just going to knurl uh, far enough back that I know I got room uh, to part this off. Okay. If you see this little red indicator mark uh, on the knurling tool. That's just a, a reference for me to know that I'm not putting too much pressure on the tool. I'm just advancing it a little bit. I'll reverse direction on my lathe now. And engage the feed again. We should be feeding out. Yep, it got me. 
I'll come out until my wheel is hanging about half off. All right, I'm going to tighten it just a little more. Reverse my direction again. And I'm going to put just one more little bit on. Reverse my direction. This time we're going to, when we go out, we're going to go all the way to off the end. All right, we're off the edge now, so I'm just going to back the knurling tool off. Got a very good looking knurl there, I think. All right, the next thing we need to do, this is going to be threaded uh, 5 sixteenths, 18. So let me grab a center drill and a drill bit, and we'll get set up to drill that hole. All right, I got a center drill in now, and we'll just get a good starting point. Got my RPM back up to about 750. Alright, this is the tap drill for 5 sixteenths 18. And I'm going to go ahead and drill it probably about the length of the uh, flutes on, on the drill just so that I know it's plenty long enough. Plenty deep enough. Alright, I think that's plenty deep enough. The piece we're using for a guide has a um, <clears throat> deep countersink in here. Uh, this actually sets up against the guide that the handle rides in. So the screw will come in from the, the shoulder bolt will come in from this side. So that's just some recess in there. And there may be a secret, if there is, uh, you all let me know down in the comments, but there may be a secret to how to measure the uh, angle of an inside, a concave like that. But I'm not sure what it is, so I took several of my tools, uh, drill bits and whatever, and that had known angles, 60 degrees, 45, 90, and so forth. Got this countersink here. And that fits perfect in there. So I'm going to try something else. I know this is meant just to do a, a little countersink. But I'm going to see if I can cut this, that entire depth with this same tool right here. As I've mentioned in some other uh, videos recently, I came across a pretty good stash of uh, tools that were shared with me machinist tools that I'll get into on a later date but this was this was one of those tools so let's let's put that in and the depth of that looks like maybe about a hundred thousandths before going all the way in so I'm going to Turn my RPM down a little again, and we're going to see if this works. I don't know whether it's going to work or not. I do know that I could probably set this up at the angle and use the compound and go in, but that's a fairly tight hole, and I want to learn new, something new, so let's just see if this tool will take care of that. We'll, do what we're talking about here. So far it seems to be working excellent. Working too good to let it get clogged up. Well 
Don't have it, just a little bit more to go. I believe we're there. I'll show you a close up of that when we uh, take it out of the uh, take it out of the vise, but I'm very pleased with it. All right, I think what we're going to do now is part it off. I'm not going to thread this until we get it parted, and then I'll turn it around in the uh, chuck. That way, I'm not uh, threading uh, threading into a blind hole, and I know I can be able to to pass all the way through. The overall length of our, of our uh, piece here stop should be 870 thousandths. So I'm going to set the parting tool, zero out the Z axis, and come in 870 thousandths. I will lock my carriage down. I want to be sure I've got plenty of lube close by. And I'm going to bring the tailstock up uh, with just a piece of wire in it. This is nothing more than a piece of 12 gauge electrical wire. I like to, in situations like this, I like to use something that will give in case the parting tool goes in and happens to grab it. Uh, we won't have a cat catastrophe or anything. So. Blade sticking out there pretty far, but this is an inch and a half thick piece. Before I get too far in, what I want to do is chamfer all these edges now. I've got the edge established, of course, here and here, but I've got the uh, one established at the part as well. This one needs just a very slight chamfer. But the ones up here that's going to be the actual handle needs a pretty good I got a little stall right there and what happened is it was not the, the cutting that caused the stall there's a chip that's wedged in there so I'm trying to just sneeze up on ease up on that chip again all right that's got it out okay now I'm sure this piece is going to be plenty hot right now, so I'm going to give it a moment to cool, and I'm going to take this out of the chuck. I'll turn our work piece around in the chuck, and we'll set up and tap that uh, 5 16 18. All right, here's what our work piece is looking like so far. I'm very pleased with that knurling that's on, on there. I'm pleased with this inner radius. There is a little bit of chatter. I don't know whether you can see it on the video or not. And I'm extremely pleased with this relief in here. So it's been a learning process. But let's mount this in the chuck now. And we need to tap this. But before I do so, I want to uh, give a little relief on the inside here um, for the thread. This is another tool that was in that lot. Uh, again, I'll talk about later. This is a uh, this three quarter inch, 60 degree high speed steel. TRW is the brand.
All right, that's a, a little bit more than I thought, uh, or a lot, little bit more than I was planning, but it'll be fine. All right, let's take our two fluted uh, tap, and this should pass all the way through without issue. A little rapid tap. Finger on the stop button. All right, I think we're ready to go out to the tractor and get this installed. Okay, I'm out here at the tractor now, and I'm going to try to talk loud enough to talk over the uh, sound of the tractor. But this is, uh, of course, the back of my, my John Deere with the uh, rotary cutter uh, attached to it. Right now, it's at its bottom position. It's at its cutting position. And I'll show you how the stop uh, on the lift lever, how it works on that for the bottom. I'm going to take the lift up now to a reasonable distance. That is plenty high enough to make turns at the end of the field, end of the road, whatever I'm cutting. And as you can see, we get, we're getting reasonably close here. I've probably got another six to eight inches of lift on this, on this hitch, but that's as high as I want to go. So I'm going to reposition the camera around now so you can see how this stop works. Okay, I'm around here at the uh, lift lever. These are the pieces we made. The shoulder bolt will go in from this back side. And those shoulders on there will keep it from twisting. Put a washer over it. Now the lever is where we set it when we were back around at the back. So I'll, I'll bring that down until it bumps the lever. <coughs> Excuse me. So as we come down, we stop on this. This is the one that already on the tractor. But now as we lift up, we're limited. Uh, this, this stops us. So we don't raise it up high enough to uh, that the PTO shaft strikes the body. Now the way this lift lever works is that should you need to override it, you can spring it out and go on down. So that's my stop for that point. As I said to begin with, I can't imagine very many of my viewers having a John Deere tractor and of course even a lot less that needs to uh, to make a, a lift stop. But I hope you got some en enjoyment and pleasure. Maybe learned a little something from this. Again, we did some facing, we did turning, we did knurling, we did threading. Uh, and we did that inside radius shoulder uh, when we cut this two dimensions down. So you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next video.